And then we will call this at 8.04. And Mr. Secretary, would you go ahead and call the roll? Mr. Chair, would that be 9.04 since we do everything in Eastern time? Uh, yeah, 8.04 Central, 9.04 Pacific or Eastern, et cetera. Okay. Mr. Alstead? Present. Mr. Barbour? Present. Banner? I'm here. Bergman? Here. Bowman? Bowman? Uh, Scotty her. said he'd be late. Um, and his alternate is also, they have a, an important board meeting tonight and they're both on the board. So neither of them will be here till they finish their board meeting. I'm Mark Madsen for the moment. Mark Bank? Present. Coco? Here. Tyler? Believe it or not, present. <laughs> Mostly here. Let's see, how do I record that? <laughs> yes. A majority or a two um, <laughs> right. Uh Johnson felt the Constitution. Johnson from Texas here. Okay. Lebrie? Here. Leatherman? Here. McCose? Nelton? I'm here, Mr. Steve is here, Joel from Georgia. Thompson. Thompson's here. Where? Mr. Chair, somebody just uh, went in. Uh, who was that? I know Meg just entered. Yes, that's correct. I'm sorry, who is that? Richard Norman, Rome, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania alternate. Rome, sorry. Yeah. All right, uh, Chatterton. With Bowman Bridge. in the meeting. Sorry? What was that? I couldn't hear you. Sorry, just a reminder that uh, Chatterton was also with Bowman in the Michigan meeting. Oh, right. Thank you. Bow Bowman just arrived. Okay, Edward. Lift. I'm here. Going in for Josh. <clears throat> Lee, Carlos, Rosa, Marinovich, Max from Illinois, here, Osborne, Redman. Uh, Rogers. I'm here. And Roman just dialed in. Veldheisen. Here. All right, Ms. Cliff, you said you're in for Macos? Yes. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I'm in for Macos. Okay, thank you. And we have the um, Yes, sound off, please, so I can record your names. 
Are there any guests, Mr. Chair? Say again? Are there any guests? I see um, Larry Silver. Okay. And anybody else? Let's see. Um, I believe that's it. Hmm. All right, Mr. Chairman, I see. Fifteen present. And quorum is eleven. So there's your quorum report. Ready? Hang on, I'm just double checking some things here real quick. All righty, uh, public comment, um, that would be Mr. Silver. Do you have anything to wish to bring to the uh, bring to the committee? No, thank you. All righty, uh, from the committee, Mr. Mattis. I just uh, quickly, I wanna apologize, Mr. Chair and the rest of the committee for my unprofessional behavior at the last meeting. Uh, I had come out of a less formal meeting and just, uh, rough transition for me and there was no dis no disrespect intended for uh, any member or for any ideas so i pledge to be more professional and to be oh my uh... god what did you do i like don't even <laughs> remember you doing anything spicy now i want to see the recording oh yeah check it out i i was a little disgusted in myself i i spoke out of turn a few times Ken, you are having... such a gentleman i can never picture that to be honest with you <laughs> thank you madam secretary Any other members of the committee wish to uh, uh, public comment? All right, I do have something to say. Uh, Mr. Mattis, we accept your apology. Don't worry about it. It's okay, it happens sometimes. Um, there has been some discussion, rather heated in some quarters on social media regarding, reportedly we're having these major image debates over open borders and closed borders and immigration and so on. Um, and there have been, there was somebody claiming on one tw tweet that I saw that supposedly we were engaging in this committee in, what was the term they use? Statist revisionist uh, planks that needed to be voted down. Now, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, best I can say is uh, I haven't seen anything like that in terms of what we've discussed about immigration planks and frankly pay the background noise no heat. <laughs> um, this committee is doing good work. It, we've got a lot to get through, but we've got, we've done a lot already. So let's not worry about it. And let's just keep on working forward. So Ms. Harlow's. Um, Mr. Chair, you're, you're used to this with bylaws. Um, there will be all kinds of conspiracies going around um, when this recording goes up, just like to have on the record, we have a very healthy mix here of people with various points of view in good faith. Um, I might be in the minority, but for, I know some people are really, really concerned that we're trying to delete the open borders plank and that we're all on board with that. And whatever the committee decides, the committee decides, but there are vocal, good faith, qualified speakers on both sides of this issue. And this committee certainly is not trying to ram something through. Um, I, I just would love, I like that on the record. And I don't think anyone could ever accuse me of being timid in my support for open immigration. Thank you, Ms. Harless. Any, anybody else? All righty. Uh, you should be able to see the agenda up on the screen. Um, next item on the agenda is the is approval of the minutes for the February 13th and the 20th meetings. Um, 
I hope that everybody's had a chance to review those separately and send any corrections in to Mr. Montoni. That being said, is there any objection to approving those minutes? Hearing none, we will call them approved. The for the next meeting, we will look at the minute for approving the minutes for the meeting of the 27th and then this one as well. That, that will get us caught up. But for now, that will go with that. So onward to new proposals. The first one on the agenda was a defense was a rewrite of the defense plank and a substitute related to that by myself. So I'm going to change screens to go to that one real fast as soon as I figure out where it ran off to. Mr. Chair. So, yes, sir. Yeah, it's a, as it's a, my proposal, I made a, a, a couple of uh, cha changes recently um, for formatting, especially to try to make it uh, more easily readable. Um, so, uh, and that was just today. So that might have had something to do with your difficulty finding it. No, actually, no. It was I was having trouble with the Zoom sharing option. <laughs> it was uh, it wasn't anything you did. It was hiding on me on my on my screen. Yeah. So we should be able to see it now. I hope. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I went with Alrighty. purple as the uh, as like the full actual uh, new language of that would. That it, that it would read as. All righty, uh, Mr. Ensor, am I correct in presuming here that what you're proposing here is a is a rewrite of the plank to what's in purple? I mean, essentially, that because similar to what I did with the government debt plank, it's uh, there are quite a lot of changes that I'm making, so it's uh, it's close enough that I felt uh, that it should be called that. Right. That's fine. I'm just trying to understand your intent here. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to make one minor adjustment here real fast. I'm going to do that instead. Just a minor adjustment to the screen share because I do. there is a substitute for this my, that I have proposed myself. So I want to make sure we can see everything together. But that was just my screen adjustment. So um, because, Mr. Ensor, you have written this, I give you the floor to speak to your proposal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Seebeck. Um, so, as uh, in in recent years, especially foreign policy is becoming a much much graver issue, and for the longest time, especially for libertarians, it's it's always been a great issue. I think Rothbard was who qu quoted. I'm starting to think that this war issue is uh, the is the biggest one of all. Um, and when I looked at our platform. What I saw was um, a seemingly tacit endorsement of um, the the kernel from which the structure that we are currently plagued with is um, it, it is in there, namely the basically the endorsement of a standing government military. And um, my my contention is the fact that, as libertarians, our ideal should not be uh, reliance on any kind of endorsement of socialist monopoly defense services, which is ultimately what a, uh, a government military is, and that we should call for its abolition. Um, however, and as that is the radical ideal, as well as, justify, as justifying it, however, because that is such a... Uh, it is uh, it is very far outside of uh, for, very far from the foreseeable future as to when that will happen. We shouldn't that shouldn't be all we say about it. So I've also included a um a an endorsement of a transitory uh, po policy, which I think even with the current structure would severely cut down, if not eliminate, um, U.S. imperialism, basically. So. Uh, I didn't know, uh, Mr. Seebeck, if you wanted to go, if you wanted to read through it, or if you'd like to leave that to me. 
Oh, go ahead. Okay. So the so the way the way I have it starting is I start with uh, striking out. We support the maintenance of a sufficient and putting in oppose the existence of a standing government military, then striking out to defend the United States against aggression, uh, and putting in as a threat to peace and security and a tool of imperialist tyranny and impoverishment. Now, what I was now there's that's quite a lot stuffed into one sentence that I was trying to go for brevity. So uh, the reason I say I say that is the very existence of a socialist monopoly military sta permanent standing is it incentivizes conflict for a ver variety of reasons, namely um, making it so that the costs of engaging in, con in conflict are externalized onto all the people. Um, and then security, because it uh, because it is incentivized to further con to to engage in conflict that uh, creates security risks around the world. Uh, most notable examples, both within living memory, one very recent, one less so, are uh, 9-11, which was blowback for United States actions in the Middle East um, for decades. And then most recently, um, the fact that the Houthis in Yemen have been engaging in attacks on trade routes in response to the U.S.-backed Israeli war in Gaza. So that, and then as far as imperialist tyranny, obviously, um, not just around the world, but here at home, the the acts that the military engages in have been shown to uh, increase the potential for tyranny at home, stuff that they pioneer abroad, they then bring back. And as far as impoverishment, they um, resources which are devoted to the maintenance of a permanent standing military and the creation of tools of, as I call it, destruction and conquest are resources which cannot be devoted to tools of construction and trade. And the, the biggest example that is typically brought forth is the fact that World War II is thought of as having gotten us out of the Great Depression, and there has been a lot of writing by libertarians, economists, and others that that's not true. So, uh, sorry. Um, and then uh, going on, um, I said, we support the transfer of defense services from government to the people. Just a, a very simple thing. Now, originally, I had in getting rid of gun control, but as Mr. Seebeck pointed out, opposition to gun control is earlier in the platform, so no need to repeat that. And then the next sentence I had, pending this, we support a policy of armed neutrality and oppose the deployment of military assets outside U.S. sovereign territory. And that's the transitory measure that I mentioned. Um, armed neutrality simply means we maintain armaments but do not get involved in any other any conflicts other than which we are attacked and oppose the deployment of military assets outside U.S. sovereign territory. Just keep the military at home entirely. Originally, I said forces, but I, I switched to assets because I want to include um, military equipment and military funding as well. And then after that, I kept the, the language that was in before. The United States should both avoid entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as policemen for the world. But then I, I did add another clause to that sentence, including subsidizing the security of Americans who choose to go outside its territory. And the reason I included that was because the, secu the, sec the security of Americans abroad is a very common justification that is used for getting the United States involved in foreign conflicts. And my contention is simply that we should not be subsidizing the security for people who go outside of 
of the United States. If people people obviously have the right to choose to go abroad, to to travel, to trade, everything else, but it should not fall upon us, the taxpayers at home, to subsidize their security for it. And saying arguing otherwise is to simply argue for the continuation of a global empire. And then the final sentence, we oppose any form of compulsory national service. That's That was pre-existing. That's already in there. It's good enough. So I left it go. So that's pretty much the extent of the changes that I went through. Sorry if I was kind of piecemealing it. Um, <laughs> I'm not the best at putting uh, putting this kind of stuff together, and we just had a state convention over this past weekend, so I was preoccupied with that. But um, I hope that uh, the committee uh, in supports at least what I'm hoping to go for and that whatever changes they wish to make, I hope we ultimately pass it. So thank you much. All right. Now, I have in the queue uh, Mr. Choco, Ms. Harlos, Mr. Montoni, Mr. Alstead, and Ms. Clift. But before we go that, I do have a substitute to propose with this. So I, I, my intention is to have the substitute proposed now so we can work on perfecting both of them as we go. Um, uh, mine is actually very simple. Uh, hold on one moment. Mr. Bowman going into the queue. I'm going to copy and paste this over into the other one just so that we have everything on one screen to make it easier to work with. All righty, I'm going to shrink that just a little. Oh, I hate it when it does that. <laughs> I'm going to move all this down to a fresh page for the moment just to make it all there we go. That's much easier to read. All right. Um, I'll speak to mine real fast, and then we'll get, and we'll get into the queue. Um, very simple. Changing the United States to nation in one sentence and government in the other, because it reflects the idea that the nation is what is what we are, and the government is the one doing the entangling alliances and getting us into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> Alrighty. So at this point we have a we have a proposal and, and a substitute. And the way to work this, and I trust Ms. Harlos will correct me because this is her specialty if I get this wrong, is <laughs> that the we will Take a minute. We will go back and forth between the primary and the substitute for um, discussion and amendments on each one. And then when we've pretty much beaten them to death to the point where we've gotten what we think is the right answers, we'll bring it to a vote on which one we go with. Mr. Well, that being Chair, said, if, 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 sorry? if I could go ahead. just talk about substitutes for a sec. Go right ahead. Um, technically, yeah, you can bounce back and forth, but the, um, the best practice is to perfect the first one first, then move on to the second one and then open them both up rather than do a ping pong from the beginning. Um, the better practice is to do the first one first, the second one second, and then open them both. We can, we can work at that route as well. So it is kind of chair's discretion, but also the point the point is well taken. So, and because everybody entered the queue, as far as I can tell, except for maybe Mr. Benner upon or before I put this up here, I'm going to make an assumption here that everybody wishes to speak uh, in the queue, wishes to speak to the primary first. So we're going to go that route. So that being said, uh, Mr. Troll. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking on the primary and I will just say this kind of speaks against the the uh, substitute in that I don't think the, the, the existing language says very much. I think this 
state would basically say that that's what the military is for right now, is to defend the United States against aggression. We know that it is used for things other than that, but I think that's kind of the underlying claim there. So we need a, a more robust plank. I think that uh, Mr. Ensler's, Ensler's proposal is that. And frankly, I think it would be best if it was just the first sentence and it ended after that. Um, I think that basically says it all right there. However, I am not offering that amendment at this time because I, I don't think that has a realistic chance of, of passing. But I do um, want to offer an amendment that, that changes the third sentence. Um, if we are going to say that we support this policy of armed neutrality, we are then saying, you know, we support the existence of a government military for the moment. And if we're going to support the existence of a government military for the moment, I, I think we need to get rid of the second portion of that sentence that says we cannot deploy them outside of U.S. sovereign territory. And I say that because if we're going to have a military and it can't even go, we can't even have it hanging out in international waters, we basically just have to wait for the attack to show up here before we do anything about it. Uh, it seems impractical and, and frankly unreasonable and basically unrealistic. Um, I also, at the same amendment, which I'll, I'll put in the chat in just a moment, I want to change the pending this language to in the meantime. So I'm about to drop how the what I would have for the third sentence in chat right now. And that changes pending this to in the meantime, we support a policy of armed neutrality period. And the remainder of that sentence would be deleted. I think I pretty much said uh, I spoke to that in my comments. So that's all I have to say. And I, I, I saw a lot of this. I don't feel super strongly about this. I, I get the idea that we want the U.S. military to, to stay home and only defend the U.S. Um, so I, I, I support that completely uh, in principle. I just think if we're going to say that the U.S. can keep having a government military, it needs to be able to function. And I don't think it's realistic to say it, it cannot ever leave uh, the United States. Okay, uh, Mr. Schoenkel, do I have, did I capture your, your amendment correctly on the screen here? Yeah, you just need a period. Oh, no, you left it there. Yes, yes, that's correct. All righty. All righty, does anybody wish to speak to the amendment? Mr. Chip. Um, I'm sorry, who was that? Well, I, I, Mr. It was Ezra, Mr. Montona, I, Montoni, I think. No, uh, that wasn't me. Hello, this is Dean Rogers. I would love to speak to this. I'm a uh, 28 year Air Force Colonel and, uh, kind of feel close to this one, if I may. Go ahead, sir. Um, first of all, uh, I, I think what we're trying to do is address current problems rather than state the world we want to have. And so I think that, that the, the, the current phrasing, we support the maintenance of a sufficient military to defend the United States against aggression. Yeah, that may be pablum, but it is true. The United States should avoid entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as policemen for the world. We oppose any form of compulsory national service. Point that is order. all correct. Mr. Chair, point of order, uh, we're on an amendment. I think the I'm general getting, comment I'm, is for the main motion. I'm getting, I'm getting to the amendment. Okay. okay. I, I so, apologize. Sure. So, in, uh, you know, to, to, to deal with all of the blue language there, uh, we don't oppose the existing of a standing government military. What we do oppose is its use as a threat to peace and security and as a tool of imperialist tyranny and impoverishment. And if we, uh, and, and to say we support the transfer of defense services from government to people 
is to say what we already have. If this is a government of by and for the people, and we have Mr. civilian, civilian point, can you please tie it to the to the amendment, please? Okay, I would like to say that we support a policy of armed neutrality is correct and oppose not the deployment. Yeah, it's a misuse of a term here. The stationing of military assets outside U.S. government sovereign territory. So deployment is is a term of art that means you know sending out to deal with a problem. But I think what we really mean is the stationing of military assets outside the U.S. sovereign territory. If they need to go to international waters, if they if they need to bomb the source of somebody else's uh, equipment and supply, they need to go and do that. But um, we, we need to change deployment to stationing. And I would like to see simply that, that that changed phrase, we support a policy of armed neutrality and oppose the stationing of military outside assets outside of the U.S. sovereign territory, just inserted into the original. And that would, that would accomplish the world that we want to have with regard to our military. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to the amendment? I would. Go ahead, Mr. Answer. Well, first of all, I, I'm curious, would it be in order to ask for division of the first part in the meantime and also from the second part of the amendment? Because I'm I'm fine with the first part, but I would but I'm not not as fine with the second part. And I, I was wondering if that's if dividing it, it is in order. Let me think about that a moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are one deep on amendments. Um, I think we're only one deep. I think we're still only one yes. deep unless so the gentleman th before. I, 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 okay, hang on. Let, 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 me, let me think this through, please. Sorry. It would be in order in terms of depth. It it would not be in order in terms of depth. Why not? Okay. I'm I'm not trying to step on any toes here. It's just substitutes are my kink. Um okay. because you have well, a I'm substitute asking. because you have a substitute for a substitute, the substitute for the substitute is considered your first level amendment. So each of these can only have one level of amendment at a time, and we're at one level of amendment. However, a division is not an amendment. It's dividing your for your second level amendment into two parts. The question for you is, are these two unrelated questions? If I'm they are, that. they're automatically divisible, no matter what level we're at. Yeah, I was I was heading in that direction on yeah, whether I they figured were you were topic divisible. Um, the point of however about the levels is well taken. Um, thank you for correcting me. Um, it's confusing, I know. <laughs> yeah. So let me think here. Um, I'm going to rule that this is divisible because the first part of this changing pending this to in the meantime is more of a phrasing change. Whereas the second part of striking with the and oppose, et cetera, is a, is a substantive change to that sentence. So I'm going to rule that they, because they are different things here that we can call them separate items and I'm going to rule it divisible. So is there, so back to Mr. Ensor, do you wish to divide these two? I would, and I would let, I, because I I would be I would like to just let the pending this change to in the meantime stand because as I said before when I went with pending this it was it was what I could come up with and if in the meantime is better language then I'm fine with that I'm less fine with the substantive change to the the entire sentence. All right, so so you're moving to divide. Is there a second? You don't need a second. Second. Second's not needed. Well, doesn't matter. You got it anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll we'll deal with the first part first and the second part second, just because it seems to be the logical order. 
is there anybody who wishes to speak to, oh, actually, excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Is there any objection to dividing the question? It Hearing none, the question is now divided. We will deal with the first part first, and then the second part second. Um, so we're dealing with the question of, um, hold on. Oh, my screen just kind of, there we go. We're dealing with the question of changing the words pending this to in the meantime. So is there discussion, debate on that, on the first part? Yes. I, have a, I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. Go ahead, at, Mr. Choco. At what point, so there's a lot going on now. At what point will we move to voting on the first part of the in the meantime change? Because basically we debate? keep going indefinitely okay. with, with other changes here to the other parts or, or talking about the other parts, but there's probably pretty good agreement on this one. We are in debate on that on that part right now. There we are because we are at, because we are at our second level, as Mr. Hoss has pointed out, there is no further amendments on it. So we are at a point of debating and then coming to a vote on this specific piece. So only on in the meantime. Yes. That's all we're discussing right now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. Any debate on changing pending this to in the meantime? Yes. What was that? Was that you, Ms. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Um, I think in the meantime is better. However, I would, I'm not allowed to propose, not that amendments would be allowed now anyway, but I'm just saying this for full committee members. We do something very similar to this type of language. If you look at plank 1.4, um, where it talks about government licensing marriage, and we have a sentence in there that says until such time, as the government stops its illegitimate practice of marriage licensing, such licenses must be granted to all consenting adults who apply. Um, I think if we're gonna be stylistically consistent, um, it, I, I think we should consider language that is something along the lines of until such time as this is achieved or something to that matter, to stay stylistically consistent with the platform. I didn't know if everyone realized that we did a kind of in the meantime type of thing earlier in the platform, and we probably want to be consistent. But if the choice is between pending this and in the meantime, in the meantime, I think is better. Thank you, Ms. Harless. Anybody else wish to debate on the first part of the division. Okay, hearing none, we can move this part to a vote. Is there any objection to amending this first part to strike the words pending this and replacing it with in the meantime? Hearing none with that will pass. So one moment, please. I'm going to take that out. And this now becomes in. All right, we move on to the second part of that division, which was removing the words and oppose the deployment of military assets outside the U.S. sovereign territory. This is to strike those words. Does anybody wish to speak on that part? Yeah, I'd like to speak to that. This is Albert Feldheisen. Just like ahead, to sir. say that um, I support uh, Mr. Cholkel's proposal to uh, eliminate that language. Um, I think that just a statement that we support a policy of armed neutrality is definitely sufficient. Um, and in terms of deploying of assets, uh, just as uh, Dean Rogers had mentioned, 
um, uh, yeah, it's more the stationing of assets, I think, that is being referred to, but also the deployment of assets. It wouldn't make sense uh, to prohibit the deployment of assets, for example, to prohibit a attack upon the United States, uh, as in international waters, like Mr. Chokel mentioned. Also, if we are attacked in some way, there's definitely uh, a right of the United States through congressional approval to send forces abroad to deal with that threat uh, once we have been attacked. So for, for those reasons, I think I totally support uh, the language or eliminating that language. Thank you, Mr. Veldhuizen. Anybody else wish to speak on the, um, on the amendment? Mr. Chair. Mr. Ensor. Yes. Um, the reason why I, I would be opposed to this amendment is because I would say that simply saying we support armed neutrality is not sufficient because in our own history, in the run up to World War II, there were so-called neutrality patrols that were conducted. And the, under that guise, the United States basically gave military backing to the British and the French. So simply saying we oppose, we support a policy of armed neutrality, that doesn't actually mean, um, that's not actually out of line with, explicitly out of line with um, policies of the past in which we have intervened in foreign conflicts. Um, and the reason why I said, I said, um, I said, uh, deployment of military assets, that is exactly what I mean. I don't mean stationed. It's not merely the fact that that military assets go overseas and stay, and stay there, like troops. It's the fact that they go outside the, the shores of the United States at all, because it's, again, through the funding, through equipping, and again, through the deployment of troops, which it doesn't have to be for very long necessarily, but the fact that they do go overseas empowers them to engage in wars of conquest and imperialism. And um, saying the US, US sovereign territory, that was my attempt to simply make a, uh, a defined limit as to where, as to where uh, military assets could go. Because again, I would say that um, so long as the, the military exists, because again, I'm coming at it from the perspective of we do not want to have a standing government military. We want to abolish socialist security services. And as long as they exist, they should only uh, exist to ward off attacks on the United States itself. They should not be um, empowered to go overseas and attack other countries, which all, all too often involves um, involves regime change wars and in and interventions in foreign border wars and the like. And so, some have said, and I can understand where they're coming from, that this is a fairly extreme thing that might make it difficult for the military to function. I would say that even with this, we're still a very far away from this becoming any this becoming a reality, but it's still within the framework of a government mil of the existence of a government military and given how we are involved in conflicts on practically every co populated continent on the globe i would say that if we're going to go extreme in the other direction i would say that that's i i would rather err on the side of counterbalancing more rather than less if that makes sense Thank you, Mr. Ensor. Does anybody else wish to speak to the amendment? I've noticed that some hands have raised recently, including Mr. Barber. Uh, Mr. Bowman is raising, is waving at me. Um, so let's go with Mr. Bowman first. Mr. Barber, did you, actually, before we go to Mr. Mr. Bowman, Mr. Barber, did you wish to uh, speak to the amendment? The amendment? Yes. Yes. Although Mr. Bowman can go first, whichever 
chairs. Okay. Describe. I just want to make sure I'm getting people lined up accordingly. Mr. Bolton, go ahead, then Mr. Barber. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a problem with striking it all together. Um, on the other hand, I do see arm neutrality can be a little vague. It's probably we're too deep in the weeds to offer an amendment, but I'm just consider this some thoughts as to other ways things could go rather than striking this language. Um, first of all, I think non interventionism might be the real thing we're talking about, whereas arm neutrality may be a little less clear. Um, the other thing is perhaps. As far as opposing the deployment, and I first was thinking stationing myself would be better, but um, to say that you can't deploy, and this would include even if it wasn't a government military, even if it was a private entity trying to accomplish the same defensive services for the people living in this region that we currently call the USA, um, even if you're privately trying to provide protection, um, a, in the modern world with modern weaponry you want to have ships on the high seas you want to have good surveillance and intelligence coming from orbit from satellites making um you know continuous observations of the ground you want to have communications that are enabled by those satellites in orbit that's not within u.s territory clearly um not necessarily within any territory so perhaps, and I can't, I know we're too deep in the weeds for an amendment, but what I would suggest is maybe instead of opposing deployment of military assets outside U.S. Um, sovereign territory, instead oppose deployment of military assets into others' territory. Those are my thoughts. Ready. Uh, Mr. Barber, one quick moment. Uh, Ms. Cliff, did you wish to speak on the amendment or were you still in line for the for the main as I had you initially? No, I wanted to talk to the amendment. Yeah, I'll put um, you on the list here after Mr. Barber. Thank you. I'm trying to get her straight here. Uh, Mr. Rogers, same question to you. Uh, yes, I'd like to speak to the amendment. Okay, I got you on the list also. We'll go... Um, and Mr. Choco, also, you same question. At the moment, no, I don't need to speak about the amendment. All I do right. want Thank to you. speak when we get through the amendment. Um, to which part, sir, when we get there? Well, it's going to depend on what's left, but I, I have... Uh, likely a different amendment to offer okay fair enough just trying to keep it keep your keep very straight okay so i have mr barber miss clifton mr rogers mr barber yeah good evening thanks um i just want to say that i agree with mr ensor's comments earlier um i do oppose striking this phrase um i also uh Again, since uh, uh, the basic idea of it, I think, is necessary. Um, however, uh, again, we're, we're too far deep in the weeds, but uh, I would also go along with m what Mr. Rogers uh, said earlier about changing uh, deployment to uh, uh, stationing. Um, and uh, maybe changing uh, um, the uh, the last phrase in there also. But in any case, the right way to do that would be to uh, vote this amendment down first and then change it with further amendments. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Ms. Cliff? Um, you can hear me. Um, yes. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Barber that we uh, that we should keep this uh, phrase, but we need to change the word deployment to stationing, um, as uh, Dean Rogers said, 
I believe. And also, I agree with the idea that we say, instead of saying outside U.S. sovereign territory, that we oppose um, stationing inside um, other countries, foreign, foreign, foreign territory. Um, and that, that would be, uh, to me, that's a, it's a major difference in thought there because I agree with um, everyone what they said about, of course, we've got, you know, outer space and we've got um, the oceans and the seas. We've got a Navy, an active Navy, and um, uh, there's every reason to believe that uh, that Navy uh, could go outside of our outside of our limits of our country. So um, I would like to propose that amendment to to this um, before we vote on it, if that's possible. Uh, an at, amendment at to that level is out of order at the moment because we're already too deep, but it can be proposed once this amendment is disposed of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Cliff. Um, Mr. Rogers and myself, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I think that uh, Ms. Cliff's uh, proposals are excellent. I too agree that this phrase needs to stay in, needs to change to, deplo uh, to deployment to stationing, and that we need to stay out of other sovereign territory. The United States needs to be able to move through international waters. You may not be aware that one of the programs the Navy does is it passes through various straits and other waterways for purposes of the law, uh, the international law of the sea, there's gotta be sufficient traffic through there to keep those lanes of traffic open, lest the countries on both sides of any given straits uh, declare that as their own territory and close those straits. Uh, and so it's important that we be able to move within international waters. So Ms. Ms. Cliff's ideas I think are excellent. Thank you. All right, I'm going to add some things to this. Um, a lot of good points made so far. Um, part of the problem with this sentence is if you keep the wording of opposing deployment of military assets outside U.S. sovereign territory in there, if you keep that in, it it doesn't address the elephant in the room that is unsaid here. And that is, is that deployment done in as a form of aggression? Or is it put as was pointed out in the chat by Mr. Velhuizen, is it in response to aggression? Because we do have legitimate authority if we are attacked to defend ourselves. And if that means taking them out on their turf appropriately, then that would require deployment of some assets outside of our, ter of our, outside of our territory, whether it's inter internationally, international waters or however. We also exist in a, in a world where the technology that exists in the military, and I know this from firsthand experience, is such that sovereign territory doesn't really mean much for deployment of some assets. With modern missile technology and the current defense, um, the current Pentagon structure posture of global deep strike, the idea of sending the troops overseas as we used to do in the last century to fight battles over there has changed immensely and is still changing as we move into sixth generation warfare. So the concern here is with if we leave this sentence in, what type of deployments are we talking about here? There was a discussion earlier, talked earlier about um, non-intervention and also defensive purposes. Um, the lack of any language in either one is missing defensive purposes. And 
I think that's a fundamental problem that needs to be addressed at the upper level. But for here, with this amendment, we need to look at the question of what type of deployments are we talking about? Okay, I've, I've said my piece. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this amendment? Mr. Choco, I know you had your hand up, but I believe that you're, you're in line for, for afterwards. Is that correct? That is correct. All righty. Um, uh, if, I, if I may, Mr. Chair, just to address your comments. Go ahead. Any, any crossing of another country's border is, is illegal. We have to have their permission or we have to have a right to defend ourselves or authorization from the United Nations. You know, whatever type of technology we use, that doesn't give us permission. And so, I mean, we've, we've already stated that, you know, neutrality is staying outside or proposed, we stay outside of other sovereign territories. There's no, there's no simple, easy way in. It, it's, a, it's a violation of the law and it's an act of aggression to cross their borders without their permission. I, if I can address that, um, th that is true if it's unprovoked. But if that nation has attacked us, then we can, by every right, cross their borders. That's all I have to say. Well, that's absolutely correct. I mean, that's just what I said. There's only certain bases upon which you're allowed to cross somebody's border, and that's one of them. But there's no special technology or special rules. I mean, these are long-standing international uh, law that has Let's existed. Let's write a little the uh, crosstalk, folks, please. Um, all right, is there any further discussion, debate on the amendment? Okay, hearing none, since there is objection to this amendment, we will move this to a vote. The question is to strike the words from the third sentence and oppose the deployment of military assets outside U.S. sovereign territory. And Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready. No, no, please. No. No. Uh, pass, but come back to me, please. Yes. Mr. Bowman. No. For Spain. Yes. Coco. Abstain. Tyler. Tyler. Sally, you're muted. Answer? No. Number eight. This is this is Mrs. Eiler. I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was muted because I didn't mute myself through the 
Zoom, I muted it on my phone. What is your vote, please? Abstain. Thank you. Marie? No. Leatherman? No. No. I'm going to say no. And Thompson? Abstain. Mr. Chair, are you voting? Uh, Mr. Benner first, and then we did, did, did oh, Mr. Burton vote? Yes, he cast an I vote. I, I vote no, Mr. Uh, Secretary. This is Benner. Okay, chair is not voting. Uh, Mr. Burton, do you want to confirm your I vote? I'm sorry, say again? Does Mr. Bartman wish to confirm his I vote so that I have it correct or correctly displayed? Mr. Bartman? Mr. Mr. Bergman, yes. Okay, thank you. One moment, Mr. Chair. Uh, the chair is not voting. Yeah, I said uh, one moment. Mr. Chair, I see two eyes. Nine nays. Two abstentions and one not voting. Did you hear that, Mr. Chair? That's 14. Did we have 14? We have 15. Okay, then I think we might have had a third abstention there. So I had three. Mr. Coco, Mr. Hiller, okay, maybe I miscounted or misreported, and Mr. Thompson wrote things. There you have it, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, two nine one and two. The amendment fails. The wording stays put, and we are back up one level. So we are open to further amendments on what we have here. Now I'm going to back up a little bit because I had in the main queue a while back, um, Ms. Harlos, Mr. Alstad, Ms. Cliff, Mr. Bowman, Mr. Benner, and Mr. Velhuizen. Mr. Cholko. And Mr. Cholko to the list as well. Okay, Ms. Harlos. <laughs> okay, I was trying to find the unmute button. Um, two things. <clears throat> One is kind of a suggestion. I, I I think when you're doing substitutes to substitutes, you start tying your hands a lot when the second substitute could be offered after the first one is perfected. Because I think some people could have improved upon this language if they were allowed to do another level. I highly suggest that perhaps the second substitute be withdrawn until this gets perfected, but that's completely up to the maker, not up to me. But speaking on the main motion, um, uh, as far as it, the, the main thrust of it, I love it. Um, this is a Portland massacre remnant where we turn pretty statist. Um, we should be opposing the existence of a standing military just like the, the founders did. They knew it was a threat to liberty. That being said, I think this is way too wordy and open to nitpicking that's going to happen on convention, just saying this as an experienced convention goer. Um, my suggestions are get rid of and a tool of imperialist, imperialist tyranny and imposure, imposurement 
that sounds like you're standing on a soapbox that's not going to fly at convention. That's going to get struck at convention. I know people are not going to like this, but I would also suggest taking out that second sentence. That is going to cause arguments for days. We are lucky if we if, if we finally get rid of the status language that we support the, the maintenance of a military. Um, there, there comes a point where you get greedy. And I think this plank is getting a little greedy. So those are just my suggestions. But I think we'll have a much better plank if the second substitute is temporarily withdrawn. Because I think whoever made that point about the deployment issue um, and I'm as anarchist as they come is correct. Are we saying we can only defend ourselves within our own borders? I mean, that that's not there, that's not going to pass convention worded that way. It's just not. I'm saying this as an anarchist that I kind of go uh about that. Like I can only defend myself up to this the the sidewalk on my front lawn. I can't step one step across it if I'm being literally attacked. Um, I don't even think that's a, a libertarian statement, to be honest with you. So those are just my suggestions. I really want this to pass, that we oppose the existence of a standing government military. And I beg you all to do whatever we can to get language that will pass. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hurls. Mr. Austin, I know you've been patiently waiting. We'll get to you in a moment. Um, I'm going to take and interrupt and take Ms. Harlow's suggestion at heart because upon perusal of the substitute versus the main, um, the substitute was originally written long before this main one came, the primary came along. And the idea initially was just as a cleanup to the plank. However, the debate is showing that I think there's a lot more of a lot more favor, a lot, excuse me, that there is much more favor towards the primary than just a simple language cleanup. So is there any objection from the body for with, for me withdrawing my substitute? Hearing none, it is withdrawn. Now then. That has a couple of uh, has an effect here now that we have the ability to do two levels of amendment. For one moment, while I make make some minor uh, formatting adjustments here, bring all this back up since we don't need that white space anymore. So one moment, making a note to myself here. Okay, Mr. Alfred, thank you for your patience. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, thank you, Mr. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to echo what Ms. Harlow said. Um, I, I guess I'm always going to be in the brevity caucus. And so I, I kind of like, uh, cutting some of this wording out as well. Um, and then I actually, I guess, I don't know if this is a inquiry, but, um, do, if we don't have a style council, do we, or a style committee, do we? Because we don't use um, ampersands in this platform, and we always stylize U.S. as U period, S period. So I don't know if changes like that, do they need to go through the amendment process, or can can you just make style is, changes? Is there any objection from the committee to changing the ampersand to the word and and changing U.S. down in the, in the third sentence to United States? Okay, hearing none, we'll, we'll make those adjustments. We're going to call that a scrivener's change because you're correct, sir. Uh, we should use better formal, formal language. There's another ampersand up here I see to take care of, and that's this one. Whoops, I think my screen didn't do that to me. There we go. Um, da -da -da, split pause here. Da -da -da. Okay, that's the only place. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else you wish to speak on the on the uh, on the uh, proposal on the on the on the proposal, Mr. Austin? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, just general support for shortening this, but I don't have a specific suggestion at this right. time. Thank you, sir, Ms. Clift. Uh, 
Sorry, shortcut didn't work. Um, yeah, I want to go back to that sentence we were we were changing. Um, the third sentence, I would like to propose an amendment that we change the word deployment to um, stationing and that we change the um, words uh, outside United States sovereign territory to uh, inside um, foreign territory. Give me the last word again, please, Ms. Cliff, inside. Foreign uh, territory. You guys can come in anytime if you see better wording for this. But we had been talking about that before, and, and it's the only reason I voted to keep this. One moment, I'm making some notes here. Alrighty. Um, do you wish to further speak to your amendment? Well, I've, I've everybody's had very, very good comments. I think that we do need to have the ability to um, be out on the high seas, be in the straits, be in the uh, smaller uh, international waters. We need to be able to be in space. Uh, so uh, it was way too limiting to say, um, we can't deploy outside United States sovereign territory. Okay. Um, Ms. Carlos, did you wish to speak to the amendment? I just wanted to offer some information to Gary and yourself. Um, things like the changes we just made with the ampersands and stuff. I mean, it's great to fix it before it makes it to the floor because people will argue about a comma for days. But just so you know, minor, minor things like that, even though we don't have a style committee, the LNC secretary is authorized to make changes like those, if, if any ever slip through. Like if we, mix a, if we miss an Oxford comma or something to that extent, can't do anything that could even remotely change meanings, but none of that would have changed meaning. And it has to go through a vote of the LNC, but I've done that. I've done a style cleanup of the platform fixing some stuff, but just wanted to let you guys know that. All right, thank you, Ms. Harlis. Um, does anybody wish to speak to the to the amendment? Mr. Bowman, go ahead. Yeah, I support the amendment. It's almost identical to the wording I was suggesting. So rather than nitpick around the edges, I just say it means what I meant also. So I'm, I'm supporting it um, for the reasons stated. One, um, it deals with um, a distinction between deployment, which could involve um, simply responding to an attack and moving troops and assets accordingly. And um, it also then deals with... Um, rather than, you know, the, I guess, the common space shared um, non-claimed regions like the high seas and space, um, treating those as neutral places one can go um, without the need to assert that anybody has committed any aggression. Um, and I think that is all um, reasonable. And obviously, um, you know, it, it, Troops need to be able to respond, and that's just a matter of strategy. It's not a matter of whether or not it's government or private at that point. It's a matter of being technologically competitive or or, re or defensible anyway to any um, foreign aggression. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Uh, Mr. Ensor, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Uh, I would. Um, I wasn't sure if Mr. Choco was ahead of me. Uh, Mr. Choco, are you still on the queue for the uh, for the main? Yeah, I, I do want to speak to the amendment too, but I don't want to lose my spot on the main. So handle me however you will. 
I've got. I'll tell you what. I've got you down for the. I got you down for the main. So let's have you talk to the amendment first, then Mr. Ensor. Okay. So uh, on the amendment, I, I like the change of deployment to stationing, and you know, I kind of made that argument a long time ago in relation to that first amendment I offered. But I think by changing the the uh, outside of the United States sovereign territory to to inside foreign territory, I, I don't know. Now, I'm, I was going to say that I think it, it, it kind of it takes the teeth out of the language. But now I kind of feel like I'm being too nitpicky. So I, I don't know. Just forget I said anything. <laughs> Mr. Enser. All right. So, as I stated before, this particular um, this particular sentence was born out of my uh, desire to have a a transitory policy for as long as we don't get what I see as the libertarian ideal of not having a standing government military. So, I will certainly fully acknowledge that it's there's going to be uh, differences of opinion as to how we get there and where to go. Um, and as Karen Ann uh, kind, kind of mentioned, I I suppose I was being a little bit greedy when I wrote this because I was, um, like I said, I was overcorrecting um, in, in the in the opposite direction. Uh, as Mr. Uh, as Mr. Seebeck uh, cer certainly noted, and as some should, when I originally wrote this, I included a, a provision about repealing gun control, as I thought that was an important th important thing, but then he pointed out that it was elsewhere. Uh, so I will say I'm obviously biased. Um, I'm, I'm not really a fan of switching from deployment to stationing because um, the well, basically how do you uh, dis how do you distinguish the difference? Um, what like when when does a deployment become a stationing like if um if, if a uh if it's just a tour that is constantly moving is that considered stationing um and i'm even less of a fan of the second change because as i mentioned in the chat simply saying that the u.s military can just stay in so-called international waters um there's a uh, it's kind of like the uh, you know the old childish game I'm not touching you uh, game uh, game of chicken that you can use to provoke a reaction. Except our military does that with Russia and China, and I don't know if this particular language would, if it was changed to this, would do do anything about um, about stop about stopping that. If this would if it would provide a remedy for that. Um, I do, uh, <laughs> I do understand what Karen Ann is saying about how th it would be tricky to pass a convention and I'm, I'm, th I'm considering offering an amendment of my own to strike, uh, some of the earlier language that, as I said, I was being rather verbose. Um, as far as this one, um, on principle, I'm against it, but in terms of, um, whether or not it would whether or not it would have a better chance at passing and still be an improvement over what we had before I, i'm i'll be honest i'm a little i'm a little indecisive at this point so i did want to just give my thoughts though mr rogers you're muted To deploy is simply to send, uh, to station is to live. In order to be stationed, the host government has to give its permission to be there. And of course, that's when a great deal of building goes. Now, deployment, you can, act, you can build bridges and you, you'll build runways, but you don't necessarily have to have permission to be there. So that's the difference in case anybody wanted to know. Anybody else wish to speak to the amendments? Mr. Brooksbank has his hand raised. Go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, I wanted to speak on the uh, the I'm not touching you thing. Um, that's still going to take place, except it's going to be right on our border. And it's going to, you know, Russia plays the same games and China plays the same games. So uh, uh, by limiting us to within the the our borders, it, it's it's not going to stop that game. Thank you. Mr. Bergman. Do we need to consider whether or not intelligence services are or are not military assets for this language? That depends upon the agency to be to be fair. Um, each military branch does have their own intelligence um, sections under the current organization of, of Homeland Security, the non-military intelligence branches, including those of the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, are not under military control, but they also provide information back and forth of, of an intelligence nature to the military. It's, it's a very, it's a weird arrangement, in, except based on the idea of trying to share and fuse their information together so that they can uh, do what they feel is proper to address the various uh, threats that may exist. Now, speaking from this, from someone from those on the other side of the way, um, as far as this specific plank goes, it's a gray area. Um, Without having it in front of me, I do not recall specifically if there's any mention of intelligence in another plank, but I think there is. Um, so if someone could find that, please let us know. Um, for here, I would argue that for the military assets, including intellig our intelligent, their intelligence assets would fall under this as well. Now, what does that mean for some of the assets that we have that are not terrestrial example our military satellites good question they're not exactly stationed within a country they're stationed above a country our airborne recons are in our inland platforms are similar similar questions um so i'm not sure if the i, I would argue that you could say that it, that they fall under this you could also argue they don't i'm not sure i'm not sure the good answer is it That's a good answer. That's why I'm confused. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there anybody else who wish to speak on the amendment? Mr. Bill Huizen. Yes, I'd like to um, say that I support um, the amendment, but um, I would also like to echo what uh, Ms. Karen and Harlos was saying about the tool of imperialist tyranny and empowerment. I think that that is kind of a soapbox statement and I would support uh, abolishing that statement and just putting a period after security. All right, that's kind of not in the scope of the amendment, but okay. Um, is there any further discussion on the amendment per se? Mr. Bergman, your hand is still up. I'm sorry, I'm taking it down. All right. Any further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Bohm. It's it's not so much discussion on amendment, but response to a request for information. I just putting in the chat the um part of the national platform that addresses under security, and it's um section 3.2. Thank you. That was what I was trying to remember. <laughs> um, for the purposes of the recording and for everybody else who has not seen the chat, here's what it says. 3-2, uh, internal security and individual rights. Um, second sentence, intelligence agencies that legitimately seek to preserve the security of the nation must be subject to oversight and transparency. We oppose the government's use of secret classifications to keep 
from the public information that it should have, especially the, that which shows that the government has violated the law. So that's just for informational purposes. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we will move. Well, okay. Uh, it sounds like there is an objection, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the question anyway. Is there objection to the amendments as as you see on the screen? Are we sure? Okay. Hearing none, the amendments are approved. So one moment, please. Just to catch that up already. Be a lot better if my pen would write. <laughs> All righty, we are back to the main to the main motion, and I still have in the queue Mr. Bowman, Mr. Benner, Mr. Belezin, and Mr. Choco. I've not forgotten about you guys, <laughs> but Mr. Bowman. Oh yeah, I mean that. I think I already spoke in favor of the. Um proposed um amendment to replace I, I, we're still on replacing um one the, one the main with stationing and we just passed that sir we just passed that okay it passed without objection wow okay um i also responding to um additional posts that came up i think it's mr Enser um mentioned that also 3.2 addressed the um intelligence issue so i pasted it in there all right, Mr. Banner. Uh, my hand is not raised, and I don't intend to be in the queue. So, okay, I had you in there from before. Uh, no worries, Mr. Vel <laughs> Mr. Velhusen, you were in the queue as well. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's uh, within my purview as an alternate to propose an, an amendment to eliminate that language that I mentioned earlier in the first sentence. Um, as an alternate, no, it is not. Okay. Well, I hope well, someone somebody else, else can <laughs> do that. Um, I have Mr. Choco, who's been patiently waiting. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I have a, a big amendment to offer. But before I do that, I just want to, uh, I guess I have a point of parliamentary inquiry here. Is there a way to table this to a date certain? Basically, I, I don't want to table it and have it get lost forever. But is there a way to punt this to email for a little while for workshopping? Because basically, I'm I'm about to offer a big amendment that's going to tie up the rest of our meeting. I'm I'm sure. So, you know, I'm going to do that. What, if there's not a way to kick this to email, what you can do is you could offer a motion to postpone this to the next meeting, which would be time certain of next week, which would then give time to wordsmith this in email. However, if you do that and it passes, the wordsmithing would then have to be immediately be proposed as an amendment once we picked it back up next week. So basically what it does then, you, know, you correct me if I'm wrong here, but it allows but who would get to decide what that amendment is next week? Um, anybody could propose it at that point. Anybody who's a anybody anybody who is a committee member. And so alternate. I have some language that I want to offer, but if I if I instead move to table this to a, a time certain, am I going to be able to offer? this or a sub or another amendment that we work out or am i just leaving it up to whoever gets in there to suggest language um you, you would you could be in order to offer that amendment after you were it. yes okay then uh, i will move to table this until our next meeting
Okay, so the motion is to postpone this to the next meeting. Yes, postpone next to Tuesday, the next as the case meeting. may be. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay, okay. Mr. Bergman seconds. And we'll need it or not, but we'll do it anyway. Is there any? Uh, hold on one moment. I haven't messed with uh, postpone postpone definitely in a while, so I need to double check myself here. So. Bear with me one moment while I double check my own sanity or lack thereof, as the case may be. Um, da, 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 da. Postpone time certain. Okay, it is debatable. So, is there any discussion on that? Um, Miss Cliff, your hand was raised. Mr. Bowman, were you in the queue for the main motion, or were, or do you wish to speak to the uh, postpone? I was going to suggest an amendment to the main motion, but right now it looks like we're on to a motion to table, and I will speak against the motion to table and then remain in the queue to speak to an amendment. Yeah, so, let, let me say this, Mr. Chair. If, if this motion fails, am I still up for on the main motion? Uh, yes, you are, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Mr. Bowman, you wanted to speak to the uh, against the uh, motion to postpone. Yeah, I just feel like let's let's get it done. We've been on it for the whole meeting almost. We might as well finish. All right, Miss Cliff, did you wish to speak to the motion to postpone, or were you still a hand up for the uh, for the main? Can you hear me? Um, I was going to uh, revise the first sentence by putting in, by shortening it. And um, so, uh, but if we're going to postpone to the next meeting, let's, uh, I'm all for that. Uh, Ms. Harlos. Um, yeah, I'm speaking, even though, again, no vote, against postponement, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, it seems to me I haven't heard what Mr. Choco's amendment would have been it, or the idea of it, which is appropriate for him to say, this is why I want you to postpone because I'm going to be, I'm thinking of an amendment along these lines. But from the impression I'm getting, it sounds almost as if Mr. Choco is going to have a substitute. And I know other people may have substitutes. So I would really suggest that at least at this meeting, we perfect something close to what's already here. And then if someone's got some really major revisions to, 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 to completely change things, that they wait until we perfect this paragraph rather than going this helter skelter willy nilly where we tie ourselves in a Gordian knot. There seems there are multiple members who want to delete some sentences. Let's make this language the best it can be. And then next, and then postpone it so that Mr. Choco can workshop a potential substitute on the list, and then they can workshop. You could do amendments to the substitute and do a head to head. But it seems like we get halfway towards the finished product, and then like we're building a Toyota, and all of a sudden like, someone turns it into a Ford. Like, can we make the best Toyota first? before going off into all kinds of directions. I think postponements are really bad idea. I think we should let members who have amendments right now that aren't quite so pervasive to make their amendments. Hey, thank you, Ms. Harlos. Uh, just for reference, Mr. Choco's proposed language is actually in the chat. So. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll Mr. Look. Brooksbank. Yes, I, I would be against uh, postponing. I, I, I feel that Mr. Choco should just put his motion out there, and then if it, if we get going too long, we can always pick it back up next week, and he'll have all week to 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 mess around with it. A point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Is it possible for me to just withdraw this because we're going to eat up the rest of the meeting talking about it? the the there, uh, uh motion to postpone is there objection from the body to withdraw the motion to postpone okay 
Hearing none, that is withdrawn. We are back okay. on the main motion. Mr. Chokla, did you wish to just propose your amendment? Then? Yes, yes. So I just dropped it in chat a minute ago. Um, okay. you see it essentially, here. what I'm doing is cutting out what I believe to be, though I agree with essentially everything said in here, at least in principle. I'm cutting out a fair amount of language to make this uh, uh, shorter, make it uh, less, uh, reduce the amount of change from the existing language and try to settle on things that I think have widespread agreement so that we can hopefully get some language that is better than this very statist sounding existing plank uh, out of this committee and through the convention. And I'm taking your wording in the, in the uh, chat. Would you go ahead and just repeat it so that the recording can pick it up? Sure. Let me make sure I read it properly. <laughs> um, okay. We oppose the existence of a standing government military as a threat to peace and security. The United States should both avoid entangling, al uh, entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as policemen for the world. We oppose any form of compulsory national service. Thank you, sir. That's just to get it in the uh, on the sure. recording. Um, judging from what you're saying there, I've taken the wording and I've put in stricken out in red the on the uh, on a motion what would be taken out by what you're offering. Yes, uh, would you please correct. confirm that what I have is right there? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Um. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Arlos. I, I don't even know if I have the right to, to make a point of order. Um, we've done this also in bylaws, so this is no shade on, on anyone here. But technically, under the rules of amendment, you can't divide, like, you can't do strikeouts that have intervening words in it. You either do it as a substitute or you do these two strikeouts separately. Because the substitute limits the levels of amendment, I would highly suggest that Mr. Choco just do his first strikeout first and then do the second one second. But you can't do two strikeouts that are divided like that. That's just completely incorrect procedure-wise. And I know we do it all the time on both committees, but it's, it's not proper. If you're going to do that, you're doing a substitute. You can't have intervening words that way. The point is normally well taken. I would point out that we have 18 minutes left in the meeting. Um, so I'm going to allow it this time only, only in the interests of timing. but only the interest of timing and only in this case. If there, if there wishes to be an appeal from the ruling, we can do that and take more time. But I think we're getting closer to getting this thing properly polished the way we want it to. And I, I, I beg the committee's indulgence on that, just trying to get through this. Mr. Choco, do you wish to speak to your amendment? No, I think everybody understands it. Does anybody else wish to speak to the amendment? Okay, I'm going to speak to it real quick. Um, I do like the fact that this takes out the uh, dog whistle terms of imperialist tyranny and impoverishment. Um, I really like the idea that it takes out the transfer of defense service and government to the people. Um, the world we live in is not going to have allow it to work um, as much as we like it to. Um, I'm kind of kind of lukewarm on the idea of arm neutrality, taking out the line about arm neutrality, mainly because I've been a big advocate of that for a long time. Um, however, um, you can also make the argument, as has been made multiple times, that our neutrality also 
is a potential for trouble depending upon somebody changing the policy. Um, opposing stationing, we've beaten that to death. Um, subsidized the security of America and chose to go outside his territory. As someone who did an overseas trip in to Europe a couple of years ago, um, at a time when there was a little bit of unrest in Europe regarding some of the uh, refugee situations coming in from the Middle East, and there was a little concern about whether that could turn into violence or so on, um, I had the responsibility to make sure that if I had to get to one of our embassies in, in, a, in a crunch, I could do so. And that was my responsibility. Um, so I don't quite understand what subsidizing security would uh, would be how how that would even work. So I think I think overall these amendments are good. I think it's it does clean, clarify and clean things up very well. I see Ms. Farlos and Ms. Cliff. Ms. Farlos, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm always, you know, my, my radical self would just say that the platform should just say, fuck the state, multiple exclamation points like we debated in the radical caucus on the number of exclamation points. However, we got to do, we, we, we do have to have an eye towards passing. Um, I agree with, um, Mr. Choco, that that makes it cleaner with less nodding to the state. But I don't think without that, in the meantime, blah, 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 language, this is going to pass. Um, if you take a look at the taxation plank we passed in 2018, um, we had in order to say we it, it should be a no brainer that we support the abolishment of all taxation. But that was another Portland massacre thing. And the only way we were able to get it passed was to say to the extent possible. Um, the fact is um, the party is not all a bunch of anarchists, however much I might wish it so. And to just go from not having, from zero to nothing in a party platform that's got to satisfy multiple factions I I think taking out that in the meantime language is a mistake. And this is why you don't do amendments separating words. But anyway, it's, a, it's up to y'all. I do think it's cleaner and I would love it for the Radical Caucus platform, but I don't think it's gonna, um, it's going to pass to just say, oh, get rid of it. Particularly with wars going on in the in the world right now. Thank you. All right. Um, I will point out real quickly that Mr. Alstead made a great point that this is, as worded, the original plank was just changing the first sentence. Um, he's got a great point there. Uh, Ms. Plipt. I think we need the third sentence. So I make, uh, uh, I'm going to propose that we uh, return that third sentence about in the meantime, uh, back into uh, this um, this proposal, and um, and I agree with Karen. I mean, we need to have the in the meantime because what we're talking about is getting rid of our entire military. Um, and I know that there uh, the Libertarian Party, the Libertarian candidates have been very popular with our military. This isn't going to fly. Cliff, are you moving to restore that that uh, third sentence? The third sentence back in, yes. Um, I like all the other changes uh, that just were proposed. In its entirety? Uh, yes. Okay. We spent a lot of time on that one. <laughs> Trying to capture everything correctly. So I'm putting that in green for the moment just to have it go back in. So Ms. Cliff has moved to restore that third sentence. Does anybody wish to speak to that amendment? I can. Bowman. You're muted, sir. Is that, are you saying it's my turn? I uh, guess, sir, if you're speaking to the amendment. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm speaking in favor. In other words, right now we're on the green there. Yes. Right? Yeah, I support keeping that in there. Um, I concur that we need to keep in mind that we have both minarchists and anarchists in the party. And then there you have gradualists, such as I suppose myself, who realize there is some something in between here and there. And we got to be somewhere in between before we get all the way to the other end. So, um, yeah, I, I support it for those reasons. Already, I had Mr. Thompson, Mr. Ensor, and Mr. Barber in in the queue for the original Choco Amendment. Any of you wish to speak to the Clift Amendment? I'll speak to the Clift Amendment now and cover both. I mean, I, yes, I would too. I'm, I'm sorry, you would speak to which? Thompson, I'll speak to the Clift Amendment. You let him go. Sure. Moment, cover both. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I support the, the Clift Amendment, uh, and uh, I also you know further support the entire Choco Amendment uh, or revision. The, um, the plank... Uh, as proposed, I appreciate the spirit that it was proposed in, um, but as others have said, uh, I, I do think the plank as originally proposed violates the Dallas Accord and uh, would not have a chance of passing at convention. Uh, we can be like we need to be as brief as possible, and um, this strikes the proper balance, and I support it. Thank you, Mr. Ensor. Yeah, if um, if it weren't for the Clift Amendment, I would oppose this entirely. Um, as it as it is, um, like was said, I think that the that that language is is very important. I think it's important that we both hold up the radical ideal and have the um, and have a and in the meantime, because we know that we're not going to get that right away. Um, as far as the rest of the language that was struck out, I was being a little bit ver verbose about it and. Um, if at least the first part, and I wouldn't be for the sake of brevity, striking it out, I don't think loses anything. And as far as that last part, um, that, that was more like, again, a little bit of a, an extra thing that I figured, um, is something that I've seen used for justifying war a lot. But again, um, it is, it's not like very key essential. So, if we do the Clift Amendment uh, to the choke to the Choco rewrite, I think I would I would be okay with that. I would also uh, disagree that uh, as it originally written, it violates the Dallas Accord. But that is a uh, but I, I won't elaborate on that for the sake of time. Alrighty, I had. Let's see, Mr. Barber, did you wish to speak to the Clift Amendment or just the Choco Amendment? Uh, no, I was going to speak to this, actually. Go ahead. Then. The Clift Amendment. Uh, yes, actually, uh, I'm in favor of this. Uh, I absolutely believe that we need something in here to uh, state that we do support uh some form of defense and actually getting rid of that third sentence really leaves the rest of this plank saying that we it almost kind of makes it sound like we don't believe in having a national defense <laughs> uh it certainly tends to state that um it certainly tends to state that we would that we would it's saying we oppose the existence of a standing military that almost sounds like supporting the complete elimination of the military. Um, almost. Um, so, yeah, we do need to have something in here uh, that allows for the, uh, for the United States to still have a military for the uh, sake of defense. Actually, at one point, I was going to uh, propose an amendment to just add the word defense or defensive between armed and neutrality. Um, I don't know if that's good or not, but it was a thought that I had. 
Anyway, that's enough of that. All righty, Mr. Cholko. Thank you. So I don't think, so I oppose the Clift Amendment largely because I don't think that the proposal will make sense if we pass it. Um, that in the meantime language made sense when we were proposing a transition of defense from government to people. So we're saying in the meantime, like while that transfer is happening, but we don't have a transfer of defense from government to the people in here. What this amendment is talking about is eliminating the standing army, which I, I think is like a core libertarian concept. It's not saying that the United States can't uh, raise up a defensive force. It's saying that we can't keep two million people uh, on active duty because we've seen what that leads to. It leads to military adventurism. So, uh, you know, I, I'm an anarchist. I would like to get rid of the I, I prefer the original language at least in principle, the original language proposed by Mr. Enser. But I'm trying to propose something that has some chance of getting through. And now we're talking about putting back a sentence that doesn't even fit in the plank. So I, I don't, I certainly can't support putting this sentence in here because it makes this plank nonsensical. That's all, by the way. Ready, Ms. Harlos, and we have five minutes. Muted because I keep coughing. I saw in chat that somebody had said, in the meantime, she replaced with so long as it exists. This goes back to my original comment of trying to mirror the language in Plank 1.4. However, I'm going to disagree that this does not make sense without that transfer of defense services to the people. It says what we oppose, and until that thing we oppose stops existing, they should minimize themselves to armed neutrality. I, I think it makes still perfect sense without it. I understand why, because my black little anarchist heart doesn't particularly care for it um, either. I just want to get rid of the standing military. But I am going to push back on something someone else said, because uh, the current language violates the Dallas Accord. That current language, when it got passed in 2008, should have been immediately appealed to the Judicial Committee. It is so highly offensive. The current language that's being proposed, we oppose the existence, is standard libertarianism that does not violate the Dallas Accord. The founders of our country were not anarchists and this is what they believed. So unless like you think they were so stupid, they walked into Wall's face first and didn't realize they were anarchists. This is just normal libertarianism that standing government militaries always get turned against the people. Um, so just wanted to say that it's the current language that violates the Dallas Accord in a really offensive way, by the way. Just, just to raise a quick point from 2008, um, the convention itself had a lot of other things on its mind besides this plank at the time, specifically the fracturing that was occurring because of the whole bar root uh, campaign. But that's just past history. We can't change it. We still have three minutes left. Is there any further debate on the amendment? Mr. Chokel, your hand was up. Is it for this amendment? I don't even know, but I don't have anything to say. All righty. Then we are ready to move. Mr. Enser? Um, I I fear that I'm opening uh, a can of worms, but move to extend time by five minutes to dispense with all business on the table unless there are further amendments. Um, that... Could you reword that motion a little better? Because this moving to dispose might go beyond more than five minutes. <laughs> all right, I move to extend time for as long as it takes to dispense with all business on the table, unless there are further amendments. So if we just go through and vote for 
the, the second level amendment, the first level amendment, and the main motion extend time by that much. If anybody has any further amendments to to this, then I say that we postpone it till next week. All right, that's a better way to put it. I'm just trying to get trying to help you get to the right spot. Um, that is an order. Um, is there objection to such an extension? Hearing none, we will continue then with that. Um, is there any further debate on the amendment itself, on the Clift Amendment, specifically what's in green? Hearing none, we will move to a vote on the Clift Amendment. The Clift Amendment is to re restore the third sentence which is in green, which states, in the meantime, we support a policy of armed neutrality and oppose the stationing of the mil of military assets inside foreign territory. Mr. Secretary, we can go whenever you're ready. One moment, please, while I finish working this out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I'm not sure everyone understands what we're voting on. We are voting on restoring the third sentence, what is in green on the screen, okay. to... Striking the strike. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, striking the strike to restore the, the what's in green to the Choco Amendment. Mr. Austin. No. Barber. Yes. Banner. Yes. Bergman. No. Bowen. Aye. First Bank. Yes. Coco. Pass. Please come back to me. Eiler. Yes. Enzer. Yes. Lebrie. Yes. Leatherman. Yes. McCose. I'm sorry. Um, Fifth. Yes. And I'm going to vote. I. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Chair, would you like to vote? Well, Mr. Choco first. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Choco. Yeah, you can go ahead and put me as an I as well. The chair is not voting. Okay. Mr. Chair, we have... Twelve I. Two nay, and one not voting. Sorry, say those numbers again, please. 12, two, and one not voting. All right, the motion passes. So the sentence is now restored. One moment, please. Where is my freaking mouse? There it is. <laughs> Apologies, folks. Sometimes his mouse likes to freeze up on me for no good reason. Likes to uh, act like it's going somewhere. All righty. Um, Mr. Rogers. 
Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to address the word as in the first sentence. That word as has two different meanings. The first one is because... Point of order, this is outside the scope of the amendment. Um, Are we back to the no, original? not, actually. We're back to the original. We're back. We're, back, we're on the oh, Choco oh. Amendment. Oh, no, excuse me. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold everybody. Everybody pause for half a second. Let me double check something here real quick. Is it? There it is. Okay, the wording of the first sentence was part of the Choco Amendment itself. But the Clift Amendment, wait a minute here. The Clift Amendment was to take out, was to re, which, excuse me, the Choco Amendment originally was the wording you're seeing on the screen. The Clift Amendment was to add back in the third sentence, which is passed. So we are back on the Choco Amendment, which includes the word as. So yes, it is in order to talk about. <laughs> I'd okay. kind of unwind that a little bit. But yes, yeah, so go ahead, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> doesn't need to be resolved tonight, but the word as has two possible meanings. It's, it's imprecise. So it could mean because the standing military is a threat to peace, or it could refer to uh, the standing military used as a threat to peace. And if it's interpreted as used, then, uh, then the others, the government could say, oh, well, we don't use it as a threat to peace. We use it for defense. So the word as leads, leaves a bit of wiggle room there. And I, I, I think a period there would be, would be sufficient. To, to make the libertarian point. Thank you. Uh -huh. Right, is, I have been, it's been raised the point in chat and I actually believe it to be correct. I'm, I'm correcting myself that discussion of the word as was outside of the scope of the Choco Amendment and I apologize for my error. The Choco Amendment at this point is to strike, if I have this correct, was to strike what is in red from what's in the blue without trying that's to, correct. I'm sorry, who said that? that? That's that's my understanding as well. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Thompson. And I apologize for my own confusion. So, um, Mr. Montoni is asking for a quick two minute break for for a quick detail, Mr. Montoni, uh, can can you uh, can it be postponed for a minute or two? Can we finish this, or is it urgent? I'm not getting a response. Um, we're going to proceed accordingly. Better, I can take a vote. I I can record a vote if necessary, no problem. Um, all right, so further debate, not amendment, on the Choco Amendment. Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote on the Choco Amendment. The Choco Amendment is to strike from the main the words the first sentence, and a tool of imperialist, imperialist tyranny and impoverishment. Striking the whole of the second sentence, we support the transfer of defense services from government to the people. And down in the second to last sentence, striking the words, including subsidizing the security of Americans who choose to go outside of its territory. Is everybody clear on what we're voting on? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. If could this could you ask and see if this passes without objection? I can do that first. That's, a, that's point point oh, point well made. Is there objection to passing these amend these strike amendments as written?
Hearing none, it passes without objection. Good. So those come out. One moment, and we will clean this up. All righty, we are back on the main motion. Is there any further, the, the currently reads as follows. We oppose the existence of a standing government military as a threat to peace and security. In the meantime, we support a policy of arms neutrality and oppose the stationing of military assets inside foreign territory. The United States should both avoid entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as policemen for the world we oppose any form of compulsory national service. Is there for further debate, not amendment, on the motion? Mr. Bowman. You're muted. Actually, you I was um, asking to propose this amendment as a, par as a fresh paragraph under that one. An amendment at this point I would put us immediately that. into adjournment for the terms of the extension. Okay. So do you, if you wish to propose that, it would Im immediately put us into adjournment because of the precedence of the extension of time. Um, let me just ask um, a, a a question, I guess, of order, Par parliamentary inquiry, I guess. Go ahead. Let's say I withdrew it and we approve this. Would I be able to propose an amendment next time or would it now become water under bridge? You could move to reconsider this next time. And then and then if that passes, then introduce it with the wording you have in the chat as a further amendment. Okay, then I'll withdraw for tonight. But also, that's only if you're out on the prevailing side of, of passing this, as Ms. Harless has pointed out correctly. Yes, I Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Brooksman. Uh, I have a question. Don't, don't we have another, uh, another 3.1 proposal? There is another one, but it is not germane to this one. And oh, I'm so, I understand substitute that, that I originally could, proposed for this one. And, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The proposal that a substitute that I originally proposed for this I was withdrawn, so that's not even relevant anymore. Correct, but there there is another proposal. Correct, there is, but it is not germane specifically to this, and because it is my, my point proposal, would be that Mr. Bowman will take we'll then a look at it further to... once we dispose of this. <laughs> Right. <laughs> never never mind. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> Any further debate on the main motion? Is everybody clear what we're voting on? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Go ahead. Um, is it in fact correct that those who might have some quibbles, different language? Additional language such as Mr. Bowman could potentially propose a minority report. It is very much possible they could do that. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. I'll ask Is there objection to passing this as written? Seeing none. It does pass without objection. Point out, because it has passed without objection that everybody is on the prevailing side. This can be reintroduced the next, at the next meeting off of a motion to reconsider for further amendments. So at that point, we have exhausted the terms of the extension. So we are at adjournment and going at 10, excuse me, 11, 13 Eastern. 
I'm going to stop the recording now.